Hi everyone, welcome back to Difference Frames the World, a channel that offers a unique perspective on global events and how they shape the balance of power. We analyze big international moves in straightforward words. Here is Clara again, and today we will discuss the civilian use of nuclear technology. Before starting the video, we would like to extend our deepest gratitude to the viewers who support the channel's growth and survival through donations via Super Thanks, Patreon, PayPal, Buy Me a Coffee, and WeChat. Now, let us begin the discussion of nuclear energy with two events happening in China and Germany. Yesterday, we uploaded a video talking about Donald Trump restarting the nuclear weapon test, which may cause a worldwide arms race that puts the world in danger, and today, we discussed the civilian use of nuclear energy, which benefits the world on the contrary. China promises not to use the nuclear weapons unless necessary, but it never stops exploring the civilian use of nuclear energy to power the country. In early November 2025, two very different scenes unfolded almost at the same time, one in the deserts of China, the other in the heart of Europe. In Gansu province, China quietly switched on a new kind of nuclear reactor, the first in the world to run on thorium fuel dissolved in molten salt. Half a continent away, in Bavaria, Germany blew up the cooling towers of its largest nuclear power plant. Two actions, opposite in every sense. China is building a new one with the fourth-generation technology, and Germany is dismantling its largest nuclear power plant. Together they tell a story about two very different futures and two ways of thinking about progress. Let's start with China's new reactor, called TMSR-LF1, which produces only 2 megawatts of power. That's tiny by industrial standards, barely enough to run a small town. But its importance lies elsewhere. It's the world's first operational thorium molten salt reactor, a technology that scientists have been dreaming of for more than half a century. China is the world's only country to have put it into full operational use. This design is part of what experts refer to as generation for nuclear power systems that promise cleaner, safer, and more efficient energy. Among the six new designs of fourth-generation technologies, molten salt reactors are the most challenging to master. It is noteworthy that China is working on all six at once, and that's not recklessness. Rather, it's China's long-term strategy. One may wonder why thorium matters and how it will shape China's future. China doesn't have much uranium, the fuel most nuclear plants rely on. However, it contains a significant amount of thorium, nearly one-third of the world's known reserves. It is said that China's current reserves can generate enough energy to sustain the country for the next 20,000 years, which is significantly longer than the written history of the human race. Thorium can not power a reactor on its own, but in a molten salt system, it can be transformed into a usable fuel and burned cleanly. These reactors operate at normal pressure, so they will not explode like the Chernobyl reactors. If they overheat, they cool themselves automatically, and they produce far less long-lived waste than traditional nuclear plants. China's small prototype, quietly running in a remote desert, represents the beginning of a safer, more sustainable form of nuclear energy. China plans to scale up to a 60-megawatt demonstration plant next. If that works, the technology could power isolated regions, islands, or even the next generation of naval ships. For China, this isn't just about science. It's about independence, the ability to power a vast nation using resources found in its own soil. At almost the same moment, two giant cooling towers in Bavaria were torn down. They belonged to the Gundermingen nuclear power station, once the largest in Germany, and one of the safest. At its peak, it generated enough electricity to power five million households. Regrettably, it wasn't a technical closure or due to a safety issue. It was a political decision, the final step in Germany's long process of retreating from nuclear power. Since the 2011 Fukushima disaster, public opinion in Germany has shifted sharply against nuclear energy. Even though a tsunami caused Fukushima's tragedy, the incident cemented the belief that nuclear power was too dangerous. For Germany's Green Party, 
which built its identity around environmental protection and anti-nuclear activism, abandoning nuclear energy became almost a moral obligation. And so, after years of debate, the country began dismantling its plants, even as its energy prices soared and industries struggled to survive. The irony is hard to ignore that Germany still imports electricity from France, where more than 60% of power comes from nuclear energy. In other words, Germany is rejecting nuclear energy at home, while it quietly buys power generated by nuclear reactors from abroad. The difference between China and Germany isn't just technical, it is also political. China recognizes that nuclear power involves risk, but it believes the answer lies in studying, controlling, and innovating it. Germany also sees risk, but it chooses to eliminate it by abandoning the technology altogether. When China's reactor came online, there were no celebrations, no press conferences. Rather, the Chinese just released a quiet statement of several lines. For them, this wasn't a publicity event, it was simply another step forward. In Germany, the demolition was a spectacle, cameras rolling, politicians applauding, as if blowing up a nuclear power plant were a moral victory. Germany's energy transition has cost hundreds of billions of euros, but fossil fuels still account for more than half of its energy needs. When the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine, coal plants fire up again and emissions rise. Moreover, electricity in Germany remains among the most expensive in the world. China's approach is different. It's experimental, sometimes risky, but pragmatic. The country is building reactors of every kind, advancing in nuclear fusion research. For a nation of 1.4 billion people, energy security is not a luxury but a must. The country not only needs technological self-reliance, but it also needs to realize energy self-reliance. So here's the question that lingers, should we build something new in the face of uncertainty, or destroy something proven in the name of righteousness? Or put it another way, should we allow political correctness to ruin our country? China's tiny reactor in its Gansu province produces just 2 megawatts. It's a small light in a vast landscape, but it's a light that comes entirely from Chinese hands and Chinese innovation. Germany, in contrast, stands in the dark, proud to be free of nuclear risk, but increasingly dependent on others. And ironically, the French nuclear power plants are not that far from Germany, so the Green Party should ban electricity from France, as it is also generated from nuclear reactors. The real danger is not in using nuclear power, but in refusing to explore it. Progress, after all, has never belonged to those who fear the unknown. Rather, it belongs to those willing to take the first step, even if that step begins quietly in the desert.